Home sweet home. Although, eventually, probably we want to start transitioning into using the Cyclops a bit more, huh? Welcome aboard, Captain. We've got a lot of life pods here. Aurora Rendezvous Point. Oh! Wait, was that the Sunbeam location? Actually, huh. That's... That's the one that we just got from reading the life pod 19 logs, right? But I thought the rendezvous point was the sunbeam place over there. Uh, that might be... Glowy Island, I guess. Some point at Glowy... Some place at Glowy Island. Yeah, it seems like it's at a really similar location. Like, I'll remember to check out that specific spot later on anyway. But right now, not anything too crazy, I guess. <sighs> Wait. Oh, we already have a life pod 19. Frick! I left my beacon there too. <laughs> the exact same spot! Oh, that's right, because this one, we followed the signal there. It wasn't like the other ones where we kind of had to guess. Okay, whatever. I'll pick up the signal next time. Or the beacon. Of the beacons, the signals we have, which ones haven't we gone to? The Ampules place has got to be explored again. There was a weird cave there. Hmm. Life pod 12. That could be a good next goal. It's right in front of us, kind of. We got this one, we got that one, that one. Yeah, I think of the list that we have here, the ones that we're missing is life pod 12 and the second Degazi habitat. There seems to be some more stuff over there, back where we saw life pod 13. You know, the place where we scan the Reaper, so I still want to go back over there. But as far as, like, actual things to um, find and see, we've got some places already. Okay. Okay, maybe we'll eat a little bit first, huh? And maybe take a... Um, uh, my health? It's at 61 right now. Does it come back if I drink more water and whatever? I think it does. Like, what happens is if I'm not hungry and I'm not thirsty, then my health comes back slowly. <laughs> We're having a problem here already. Yeah, I'm just gonna put this stuff in here for now. I definitely want to plant the jelly shroom. Actually, can I plant this? Contains blood vine seeds. May be processed into benzene. So maybe I should plant this too, because if this is so far away, if I plant one near me, then I wouldn't have to go that far away, right? Okay. Can I get some water going on here? Ah! It's dead. There we go. I haven't really been eating any of them besides for the first tree here. All these other bubble trees. Hmm... <laughs> I think for the water filtration system, we were missing some ingredient too, right? And that's why... that's why I can't build it yet. The little sick fish I got... Uh... I don't know, it's still here, right? Actually, where did it go? I might have eaten it already. Okay, not a problem. Don't have space here for the oculus, though. Okay, whatever. Wanna do a little bit of reading? Yeah, I just remembered the last time. Because I glanced at it already, it didn't give me a pop-up again, but the stuff that we saw back on the Aurora, the public documents... We didn't finish reading that. Altera Alms Pamphlet Charity is an archaic concept which the realism of today's Alterans have rendered obsolete. We understand that we are each responsible for ourselves, but the best way to get the most for ourselves is to work together with Altera. The implication of this reasoning is clear. If someone is in need, they must find a way to be needed. Okay. Altera Alms is a training academy for those that need to be needed. We're not a charity because we don't ask for handouts. We prefer to think of ourselves as a philanthropic beneficence facilitation service promoting synergy between employer and workforce. AE operates on a lottery system. By investing any number of credits, you will be entered into our prize draw. Larger investments yield higher chances of winning. Your credits will go toward training unskilled colonists in vital tasks, such as maintenance and interpersonal skills. 
The colonists receive this training voluntarily and free of charge, on condition, on a minimum contract with one of our investors on completion of their training. What? Oh, okay. Big corporation doesn't do charity. Big surprise. Maybe that's part of the reasoning behind why we're not really being rescued right now. Remember that one radio message we got? The guys were like in the cafe or something, picking what food to eat. And they're like, oh yeah, remember, go to the captain's quarters and you'll find important documents. Later, man. And that was pretty much it. Altera launches the Aurora. This one we've read. Yeah. Altera Corp operates like 10% of all the phase gates in the galaxy. So it seems like in terms of the, the space race, I guess, Altera and Mongolian corporations are big players. Mongolian players include the Torgal Corp, the Degazi people. Mm -hmm. Relationship contract, no. Responsible autonomous relationships. Forward by Jenny Eckhart. All the good things in life are commodities. We trade love just as we buy and sell stock. We engage in human relationships when there is a fair exchange of value, support, motivation, affection. Nothing good is ever free. If every physical good in the Federation came from a single supplier, it would constitute a dangerous monopoly. Personal relationships are the same. It is important for people to get what they need from multiple sources. If a person finds a better source of the goods they require, they are not wronging their original supplier by changing their purchasing arrangements. If one member of a relationship should feel threatened or jealous, they must look at their own business model and ask whether it is performing competitively. There is always room for improvement. Oh, this is probably why this person was talking like a freaking robot then. What? Why? Everything here is so like... Like this trade and barter, there's nothing for free. You gotta put in the work to get some work back. But like, yeah, okay, in general, sure. But for everything, love? Love and affection is not free? Man, somebody could probably make an argument that that's not really love. Like, I don't, I don't know who Jenny Eckhart is, but everyone here. It's some space-age things, I guess. This is probably not 2021 then, but how far into the future, I don't think we know. Yeah. What can we learn from the hive mind of Strater 6? We found this one in the lab, so this might be like a lab report. How are the individuals which make up a hive mind to be categorized? Are they merely dumb components of the larger intelligent organism? Or is a larger mind merely a product of the independent organisms? Can it be both? We define organisms by their traits, but find invariably that these traits depend on those of their environment. The concept of a tadpole is meaningless without the concept of the frog it will develop into. The idea of a predator is empty without an understanding of its prey. This begs the question, if we define everything by reference to everything else, what have we actually explained? An illustrative experiment was recently performed on the hive mind colony discovered on Strata 6. The Strata 6 is a planet? A device was placed outside the nest which would electrocute individuals approaching it. An ant colony would have lost many individuals before a basic danger signal was successfully communicated between them, resulting in learned avoidance of the device. Successful but costly. The Strata 6 colony quickly formed into two factions. One attempted to move the device by brute force, sacrificing individuals as they did so. The second attempted to cover the device in sand. These two goals being mutually exclusive, a fight ensued. The first faction was beaten, in virtue of their reduced numbers. The device was safely buried, and the survivors called a truce. From the perspective of the individuals, this experience must have been horrific. From the perspective of the hive mind, a nagging problem had been overcome, with the most effective solution. Which perspective is the correct one? We suggest that it is neither. By attempting to fit such entities into our rigid set of concepts, we are painting onto the world a false impression of concreteness and meaning, which is a reflection of our concepts of ourselves. We describe strata six individuals as attacking one another, just as we describe microbes in the human body. Yet the strata colony, like the body, cannot be healthy as a whole without the aggressions of its components. We describe neurons in the brain as being dumb, but brains as a whole as intelligent. But when an idea takes hold in the brain and forces out inferior ones, do we describe this as an act of aggression? Do we mourn dead neurons? When a philosophy or a technology takes hold in human society, when wars are fought over them and people die, is that rightly seen as good or evil? This is not to undermine the meaning of our existence. From where we stand, our existence is very serious indeed. But is our civilization and our universe really any different from the colony on Strata 6? Is intelligence something limited to things of flesh and blood? 
Or is the universe truly one giant intelligent system, and we but amoeba blowing self-important potholes in its surface? We would do well as scientists to remember that our goal is to not paint the world as we see it, but to see it as it truly is. Hmm, kind of like perception bias? It's gonna be hard because we come from a different star system, so coming here... Like for example, it's gonna be very easy for us to say Aliens are evil and bad and they're trying to kill us But maybe... maybe they're just defending themselves against intruders Even earlier, the messages that we got on the radio about how Oh yeah, we're gonna hunt and analyze this person here Maybe that's something not entirely negative We're not really gonna know because, I mean, we're judging them? based on how we would treat people, I guess? It's a bit of projection here, too. We attribute traits to things that we see based on patterns we've seen before, but we're on a completely different planet with different sets of rules, different organisms, different everything, so who knows? Wait, so Strata 6 is not a... It's an organism, it's not a planet, right? No, I mean, the planet is called Strato 6. There's a colony. We don't know what kind of creature it is. Some organism, I guess. They're fighting for a way to figure out how to survive here. It kind of reminds me of how Paul and Mercenary Lady have been fighting, even though ultimately they both want to live and survive. Maybe if they found a different solution together, then not everybody would be dead right now. Hmm. Supposedly, Bart is somewhere around. As far as we've seen. I don't know though, because the Aurora did do a scan, and it did say that not many people, I mean, like one person is around, me. So Bart doesn't seem to be alive anymore, unless if some crazy alien shenanigans are going on. Ruby, a hard blood red gemstone made of aluminum oxide. Rubies may be processed in order to leverage their structural integrity in advanced vehicle construction and modification. Advanced fabrication. No, hey, let's read about our, our one winning entry from last time. The Warper. The Warper... Does it eat meat? It does. Oh, it actually, the legs look kind of weird. I don't know what's going on here. It's kind of like it's wearing a coat. An aggressive creature with the ability to teleport itself and others in space. No genetic crossover identified with indigenous life forms. Demonstrates no recognized offensive behavior. Oh. No genetic crossover with indigenous life forms. Are you not indigenous? Number one, head. Mechanisms located in the head region provide its warping capability, which it uses to stalk its targets. Number two, appears to hunt other life forms, but no digestive organs have been identified. Internal structure considerably more complex than other known organisms. Unable to distinguish whether organic or artificial in nature. Further research required. Oh, this is a weird creature then, huh? Both times that we've seen it so far, they've been around alien structures. The first time on the Sunbeam Island, and the second time near the alien vent. I guess it's probably because we haven't seen any other humanoid creatures around. This one single creature being humanoid, vaguely. I mean, kind of, it's got like two, two claws and two legs-ish if you squint. It kind of unsettles me. I'm not sure how much I like it. Okay, well, why don't we regroup a little bit, and probably my next goal will be over there. I do remember it said something like, don't go unless if you're prepared. So I will be prepared. Oh my god, this is insane. I'm trying to put this down on my desk right now, but it keeps switching to my other stuff. This is all I want to do. And the Aurora. It's easier for me to move around than to try to rotate it. A lot of work getting done on this table. Cup of coffee after a hard day of work. I added another solar panel because I was doing a lot of fabrication and I didn't want to run out of um, electricity. And in the process, I learned something new. I thought the base had to be entirely connected for the power to flow. But... Thank you. I was trying to mess with making and deconstructing new stuff outside. And it turns out that even if the multi-purpose room and the scanner room aren't connected, for some reason, they still share the power source. Like, if I tried deleting this entire part here, I don't know why, but the power is still shared, so that's good to know. 
I think we're about ready to head off now, but before that, I do want to plant my stuff. I think purple background means plant outside, and green background means plant inside. So let's try making a exterior grow bed somewhere here. Speaking of making stuff, I was messing with my base, and I tried making a moon pool because the habitat builder reminded me I can make one now, but I don't know where to put it. It's gigantic. Like, I literally don't know how to find a spot. I might have to move away from here. It's getting a little bit too cramped, I guess. I tried deleting these tubes, but it still won't fit this anywhere. The only places where I can fit it is, like, if it's floating in the sky or something. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna, like, connect it to other places. I'm gonna forget about it for now. I want to go off on an expedition, so why don't we just do some planting here and... Yeah. Exterior grow bed. Artificial plant bed. Suitable for use on land or underwater. Oh, this one needs a lot of space too. Well, this one doesn't... it doesn't have electricity, so we can just kind of put it wherever works. And I can't even find a single spot where it works right now, so that's great. I want to plant some jelly shrooms so we can get some lighting going on here. But if we're planting anyway, we might as well try planting the blood oil. Oh! Where am I? What am I looking at right now? Where's my flashlight? I can't see! What? <laughs> it's half like... Yeah, maybe at least put it on the... Why does it only work if it's like half touching the outside? That's so strange. I can't see, dude. It's getting a little bit too dark here. Okay, we'll just leave it like that for now then. Maybe we'll put a light here or something. I don't have glass. Great. Farming alien plants is a proven survival strategy. Craig McGill survived 47 months on a healthy, raw salad of live tree roaches and stank root. Really? Okay, this is really far from where I normally am. Can I really not build it anywhere around here? It needs flat land. That's the main problem, I think. Okay, whatever then. I'll put a light here. But I want to make some glass first. I ran out of titanium earlier, so I went to collect some metal salvage. And you know how the stalkers keep chewing on it? I found like 20 billion stalker teeth because of that. But it was just lying around the salvage because I guess that's what they were doing the whole time. Oh my god, I don't have enough quartz again! Okay, forget it then. Let's just build this and head off. Because I want to head off and find out what that life pod's all about. It's a little bit far, but we can probably find it. It won't get lost. No predators here. Nobody eat my plants, please. Like that. Oh, it changed. Blood vine. Pale white kelp commonly found in the blood kelp biome. If I put two in the same grow bed, it's probably going to be pretty weird. But I can... As long as I have one planted, when it matures, I can pick up a lot more of it. That's the idea behind this, right? Okay, so I'll just leave it here for now. Maybe I should plant the other blood oil too? Nah, we'll just leave it like that for now. Yeah, that's the one thing I wanted to get done, and... The moon pool, I'll have to like, I don't know, we can't terraform this place. I might really have to think about moving. Makes me a little bit sad, but hey. Let's eat a little bit, and we should be ready. Got a bubble. Oh, it's decomposing already. I put a bunch of nutrient blocks and water, not that one, into the cyclops. So today, what I'm thinking is we'll drive the Cyclops over to the life pod, and then we'll just use the sea moth there, and we'll see how it goes. Instead of going here from the sea moth directly. Because I'm pretty sure we can put the sea moth into the Cyclops, right? We had a section for that, although I don't know how to do it yet. Oh, I'm dropping it! I'm not eating it! <laughs> Are you ready? So, how do I... Is there like a place I can... Oh! Okay, well there you go. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, energy charging! You can charge the energy? 
But are you using the power cells to do it or what? I can't tell. I guess so, but it should be okay. We're just gonna do a small trip today. Oh, I can access the storage here. Good. I'm thinking about the Sea Glide a little bit. Not sure if I really want to have it on me anymore because we haven't been using it much for the past bit, but I'll have it for now. I like having it for escaping situations. But between the Repulsion and the Stasis Rifle, not sure which one would be more useful to have on us. I feel like I want Stasis Rifle more because if I know that something chasing me is frozen, then I feel safer, as opposed to bumping it away because it can come back. And if the object is too big to bump away, then we can't bump it away. So yeah, that's the reasoning behind my inventory here, and why don't we try driving then? Oh my god. As for the name? You know what, let's not think too hard. What's the stuff they usually find in front of ships? Like SS something? Oh. SS fridge. There we go, nice and simple. And uh, not gonna worry about... Oh, even the name can change color or what? What does it mean, my name? Oh, is the name printed outside on the ship? I don't know. Okay. Uh... Maybe we should sleep first. <laughs> if we could sleep on the Cyclops, that'd be pretty cool. Actually, can we? I mean, there's some space here. Oh! Okay, this might work. Hey, we can actually <laughs> build a bed right here. Mm, I don't want to build it in too conspicuous of a place. Okay, this time I don't want to build it like this, and now you won't let me. I don't want to block the main road, that's all. Here? We've got to walk over a bed. <laughs> Perfect. No! 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 Fiber mesh. Oh man, you're kidding me. I'm missing fiber mesh. I don't know how to build that. Is it from the creep vines? It is. Hmm, if we can use the habitat builder in here, that actually enables a lot of things. Like at the minimum. Oh, but then everything would be using this kind of energy though, wouldn't it? If I use the fabricator? I'm not sure. Well. Hmm. Okay. Fabricator. Table coral sample. Ah! We're right back. Fabricator right here. Oh, this changes everything. Although I'm kind of worried about where this is going to be drawing power from. It's got to be the power cells, right? Oh, I didn't make the fiber mesh. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about the power, so I'm not sure where this is happening, but okay. <laughs> Yay! But by the time we finish this, it's already daytime again. That's great. <laughs> But, uh, wow, yeah, this is... I think this is gonna be a game changer, because now we can truly become mobile. I'll worry more about it later on. For now? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this power is being used. For now, why don't we just go to the life pod then? I did put some supplies in the lockers here, like I mentioned earlier. We've got some... Water, food, medkits. I feel like if nothing goes wrong, if we don't get horribly attacked, this should actually last us for quite a long time. But today, let's just focus on driving, trying out the Cyclops. Yeah? Oh, did I not add a name earlier? SS Fridge. Alright. I'm pressing done, but is it not like... Is it not saving? There you go. Okay. Here goes nothing. Engine powering up. Takes a while, huh? Do, do I want to go that fast right now? It's middle speed. Today we're heading off to Life Pod 12, sunk into the ocean bed. They mentioned don't go unless if you have a lot of equipment, which I feel like we have a good amount of, so we should be okay. Okay. 
We have this sonar map here, in case if anything tries to chase us, I guess. Oh, this thing itself can go to 500 meters. But sometimes, the little cracks, obviously you wouldn't be able to fit in a gigantic submarine. How do I go down? How do I go a little bit lower? Oh, like this, okay. But I gotta be careful. Oh, there's uh, Life Pod 6 again. Is this on right now? Rick for Simon, oh. Ronnie. No, no. Oh, so we can drive like this too. With a camera on the bottom. This might be easier because we're not looking at the entire HUD and whatever. There's a mushroom forests again. So this might be close to the Ampio place then, huh? Go a little bit lower. If we're trying to cover the same amount of distance, I wonder if going slow or fast uses the same amount of energy. I'm guessing so. We're still learning how to drive here though, so I'm not gonna go too fast. Oh, this might be close to the ampules. Oh! There's one right there. The ampules seem to have some kind of uh, electricity going on. I'm kind of worried about my electrical equipment in that case too. Like, will it have an interference effect? I hope not. Well, we're getting really, really deep here. My plan is to stop the submarine right above it, and then we'll go down using a Seamoth. Oh, this might be exactly where we dropped the other beacon. No one's gonna attack me though, right? Hopefully not. Oh, it's right there. It's right there. Okay, what is that stuff? Why is it sometimes red, sometimes yellow? Possible enemies? Uh... Maybe I should go back a little bit higher. Yeah, okay. Okay. Make sure they can't really reach me. Seems like the ampules might be dangerous then. Do I need to, like, turn off the engine? Engine powering down. Well, let's try going down and seeing how this works. No, if I want to access the sea moth, it's from above here. Mmm, and this is fully charged now. Online. Yeah, just to make sure, if we turn on the beacon for ampules, is it around here too? I can't really tell for now. Fairly close by. Will you attack me? You will. But the ampules, last time I kind of brushed across one and it was okay. Oh, whoa. Hey, there's a thing here. Oh, <laughs> repulsion cannon. Thank you. But I learned about it already. Should probably switch back to the scanner here because I think I see some new fish already. Oh. Integrating new 
PDA data. No obvious reason why this life pod got broken. Except maybe these ampules. Hmm, probably shouldn't get near that. So we didn't learn anything new here, unfortunately, blueprints-wise. But we have Medical Officer Danby's crew log. I'm uh, not really a doctor. I know that's what my ID says, but I never have been. Cheated the medical exams. What does a doctor these days need to know about manually resetting bones? When was the last time a top surgeon actually cut someone open? That's what the robots are for. Doctors these days read diagnoses off of computer readouts. For that, I'm perfectly qualified. But what good is it when I'm not connected to the main network? I'm bleeding. I've got glowing green pustules growing on my hands. I run a self-scan and it tells me I've got skin irritation. The only thing I studied in medical school was how to lie convincingly. What the hell do I know about how to treat an alien disease? I think I'm actually going to die down here. We're definitely at the point where there's a lot of automation and using robots and all that, but then there's an over-reliance on it and the doctors don't really know how to heal themselves. Looks like he was infected too. Speaking of which, it's been a while since I've scanned myself. No, nothing new. I'm still infected. Well, I primarily came here for the life pod, but we can look around too because it seems like a creepy place here. And you know there's usually good stuff around- ah! Ah! Oh my god, not again! Oh, it's so far away and it did that. That's the first time I actually managed to get away from it. Oh my god. Okay, let's look around in the sea moth then. Why don't we look at the ampule too? We need to know how they behave so we know how to avoid them if needed. Are they carnivorous? They are. A powerful and in inquisitive predator found inhabiting the deeper waters of the reefs and bulb bush colonies. Electrical prongs. Torso-mounted prongs generate a powerful electrical current, which the ampule uses to incapacitate its prey. Jaws. Large, flexible jaw, studded with sharp teeth. If a faster, stronger, and hungrier predator lives on the reefs, it appears to avoid the ampule. Avoid or incapacitate? I think avoid is okay for now. There's some volcanic activity in this place. But maybe what we can go to specifically is that one cave that we saw before. It's really pretty here. But probably, you know, the prettiness is equal to the scariness. If we want to, we can definitely grab a sample of this to go back home to. Uh, one thing I did forget to bring with me today is a beacon. But we do have two here, so hopefully we'll be able to figure out where to go to if we need to. Mm, can I fit in here? Oh jeez, there's so many... Are these all mesmers? No, but they seem to be here pretty often. I gotta repair my Seamoth when I have the chance, by the way. Don't want to do it in a rush. It's a little bit tedious to go in and out, but we gotta make sure. We have these giant bulb tree things. There is a wreckage. And the stuff that we can scan here, I mean, I'm gonna guess it's probably stuff that we have already, but I will look at it just in case. It's the scanner room. Oh, jeez. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> the shadow really scared me. Okay. Okay. The cave is... on this side. I don't even know if it's daytime or nighttime right now because it's so dark here and it just seems to be that way. Oh, I should probably turn on the beacon for 
The Cyclops. SS Fridge. <laughs> anyway, we have the... Oh, I'm totally getting turned around. Where are my other beacons? <gasps> you weren't- Ah, duh! This one's infected. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I don't think we can fit the Seamoth in there, can we? Seems kind of hard. Oh, it's not actually as big as a cave as I thought it was. We can try going to that little hole. I kind of doubt it'll lead anywhere, but we can try. Oh! Oh! Whoa! Whoa! What? Oh, jeez. Okay. Dude! Uh, okay, maybe we should get back in the Seamoth right now and drive away. It's wrecking my Seamoth, though. I don't like that. Not at all. They will not leave me alone. Oh my god. Oh, I feel like leaving my Seamoth here is a pretty bad idea because what if it breaks because these guys keep constantly attacking? If I go outside, will you stop? I hope you do. Oh, jeez. Ah, oh, I don't got room for this. Okay. Oh my god, not again! Not again! Dude, stop! Please, okay? I just want to look around inside. That's all. Here? Oh, it's the leeches again. And this thing. This tree leeches. We saw them by the mushroom forest. Spotted dock leaf. Okay, I'm sensing that we'll probably get lost if we go too far in. This might be a problem. This is definitely a place I should have brought the Pathfinder for. Okay, we have three minutes. Can quickly look around, gather these things. I kind of lost where I came from already. It's probably not a good thing. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh god, it's hot here. More creature eggs? Okay. I don't want to wait until we have one minute left to go outside. Let's try to see if I can find my way out first. According to where the sea moth is, maybe? Okay, that wasn't actually so bad. But hopefully the bone sharks haven't been trying to get my sea moth. Ah! Ah! Oh, but I feel like this might want to be a little bit closer if I want to like... If I want to make sure I have enough breath and all that. It's just that the bone sharks don't seem to want to leave me alone. Again? You're so annoying! Can I... Oh, I don't advocate for killing people, but... If you keep doing this... Well, please don't. Please don't. Now I'm gonna try to swim back to that volcanic place if I can. Hard to explore like this, though. I really wish I brought up Pathfinder. I have a fabricator on board, but I don't... Pretty sure I don't have enough materials. 
whatever it is. Because I didn't put any materials besides like food and water into my Cyclops. Uh, we can kind of go down, but that doesn't seem wise, does it? Let's try. Here? Oh, shoot. Oh, you're infected. Oh, I can go... No, this is... We should probably go. How far down can we go, though? I kind of wonder. It does seem really, really deep. But as far as I can tell, I'm not sure if there's any mineable resources here. Dude, that's molten lava. That's hot. Being a little bit mindful of the time here again, we have two minutes. Okay, we're back in the main area here. Sea moth, this way. I'm probably being a little bit over careful, but without a pathfinder tool, probably going back more often would be a better choice. Please, stop coming over here! It takes away 15% every time, too. Welcome aboard, Captain. Okay, maybe it's better to try to wander around outside here. It's definitely very hot in this area, as far as I can tell. But without something like a life pot to guide my exploration, I'm basically just looking around here. If we find something cool, if we don't... Hmm... I don't know, how much do I want to find something, is kind of what I wonder too. We saw an alien vent around here last time, so I feel like there's some alien stuff around here. Maybe if we read the alien facility list. Yeah, there's some rubies and stuff. Woo! Ah, ah, it's a little bit hot. Just a little bit, though. Nothing I can't handle. I am getting hurt. Ravines. Hey! We got another shiny one. We can build a collection. Just be careful not to accidentally eat it. There's a life pot again. Maybe we should pull up the list of alien facilities. I don't know how much we can reach around here, because some of them seem to be pretty deep. Yeah. Do I want to go back in right now? I mean, okay. Mm-hmm. And drink some water. The list of alien facilities. Is it clues and codes? Yes. Disease Research Facility. Cave system. Southwest of Enforcement Platform. But look at the depth though, like we can't reach these places. See, this might be where... Yeah, I feel like this might be suspicious because... There's a lot of volcanic activity around here, but 1200 meters, we can't do that. We can't do that. So even though we're not running out of resources today, I'm not sure how much we can actually learn here. I mean, I don't mind going around on the sea moth for another round, but I feel like it might be... Maybe overall, we'll have a more productive day by leaving here and coming back later on. All systems online. Especially because that blood oil place last time did seem really interesting. And we could go there. How far down though? The sea moth goes 300 meters. 
we could swim down by ourselves, but I don't know how far... Yeah, I feel like we're still being constrained by the depth requirements here, I guess. Ooh, I think we're leaving the area. Warning. Yep. Maximum depth reached. Hull damage imminent. I could try swimming down, but... Then oxygen kind of becomes an issue. Definitely want to note that this seems to be where that thermal plant is, though. But other than that, for now? Maybe not too many resources we can gather. Just kind of mountainous around here. Yeah, the ampules don't bother me. It's just the bone sharks that are being annoying. Okay. Mountains. Ho! Oh. Ho, oh, hello. What did I say? Look, every time we see a Frieza, there's an alien thing around. This has got to be the thermal activity place. It's got to be. But we can't go down right now because we don't have the equipment to. Hey, there's another! There are so many of you around here. Excuse me. What? No. I think I saw another one. No? Apparently I'm starting a collection of shiny peepers now. What's that guy doing? Yeah? You're not gonna bother me too much? Okay, cool. I won't bother you either. Oh, there's another one! Look at that! I've gotta get it. For my collection. <laughs> the most fruitful thing happening today is me collecting a bunch of shiny peepers. Mm, I don't think we need to mark this place because I don't think you can actually do anything at these events. And I can't anyway. I don't have a beacon. Weirdly enough, this guy doesn't seem to care about me when I'm in the sea moth. Okay. We're getting further away. What is that? Creature egg. Okay. Oh! Oh, this thing! I saw this before. <laughs> I saw when I was editing the last one, I got out of the ship to try to scan that thing, but I got distracted by the tiger plant. What are you? Gel sack! Oh! Hey! Let's see here, let's see here. You okay? Not gonna attack me? Gel sack. It's food! It's food. But gel sack. Aerogel, that's what you are! Oh, perfect! This is perfect! We can make synthetic fibers too. Fiber mesh, benzene. Hopefully when we get back, we'll get some blood oils and all that. Great! Great! But there was just this one here. How do we get more gel sacks? Is it also something I can plant? It's got like a vaguely purple background, so maybe? I'll have to try planting it when we get home. Is that another vent or is that the same one I saw earlier? Oh, I think we've somehow wrapped back around to where the... Yes. Yeah, this is where we scan the Reaper, probably. Oh, but I don't want to go touch you right now. Is there anything fun down here? Hmm. So we have a vague guess for where the thermal power plant is. We just don't know how to get down deeper yet. 
Oh, frick. Look at that. I'll be careful of the hull. It's a gigantic wreck. Hey! Warning. Maximum depth reached. Hull damage imminent. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Just in case. That is a freaking PDA. Isn't it? I've got a laser cutter in my Seamoth. No, it's a data thing. Alien containment provides optimal conditions for flora and fauna. Oh, okay. Near blueprint acquired. I learned how to make an alien containment finally. Even though we had that entry for so long. Okay. Let me get my laser cutter. Oh, nuclear reactor! Two or three. Hey, if we're seeing one around here, there's probably multiple. Definitely worth looking at this wreck more. So what is this then? Maybe it's like a broken piece of the nuclear reactor? Maybe I should make my sea moth and the... Cyclops different colored. Air? Oh, too much stuff. Way too much stuff. Random stuff too. Shiny peepers. Laser cutter. Even around where that Reaper Leviathan was, that's where we found the first piece of um, a nuclear reactor thing. So there's definitely going to be more around here if we keep looking. That's what I feel like. Excuse me, you're not welcome here. Please don't bite me. I'm busy right now. Nutrient blocks. Nutrient blocks. Oh, prawn suit fragment. And now we're actually getting these little pieces. Another one? Prawn suit torpedo arm fragment. We need two. Oh, we have more stuff for the prawn suit. Hey, now this time if we go back. We can finally make a prawn suit because Aerogel. Please observe safety protocol CSP21 before handling classified cargo. Oh, there's a downstairs portion, but we can't go down. We need more gel sack though. Right now we only have one. The other place where we know has it is that creepy place we were at last time, so we could definitely try going back there if we really, really want to. Cyclops thermal reactor module converts environmental heat energy into electrical power. Oh, that's so good. New blueprint acquired. So that basically means as long as we're around this area, we'll be good. Energy wise. New blueprint acquired. Plant shelf. Quilted double bed. New blueprint acquired. Fancy. New blueprint acquired. We have one minute-ish of oxygen left. This probably goes out another way. Oh, we can't even go out? Okay. That's it. But we did get like a prawn suit fragment. Torpedo arm. We keep looking around, but let me get some air. At first, in that earlier region, it feels like we didn't really get to anything, but the more you look around, the more you find. Welcome aboard, Captain. Oh, look at this. It's starting to get so deep that 
whether I have the flashlight on or not, it doesn't really... Like, you can't really tell. That's not good. Hmm, I don't need a nutrient block right now, and I definitely don't want to eat the peeper from my collection. Well, I can't eat it. Doesn't really matter. Let's look around this wreckage a little bit more. See if there's any more gel sack in the area. It's pretty noticeable. So I do hope that if it's around, we can see it easily. But not around the wreck specifically though, probably. Oh, look! Is that the torpedo arm? Grappling arm! Arm upgrades? We got it. Good. Nuclear reactor. Good, good, good. Oh, don't even need this one. Okay, we're doing good here. Oh, there's so many. I don't need it. Well, there's really so many. One must have blown up around here then. All these pieces. Hmm. Do you want to give me a thermal one? I don't have the thermal one yet. No, they just want to give me a million nuclear ones. Oh, I don't think we should wander off this far, especially when it's this dark at night. The Reaper Leviathan has been making noise the whole time. Thankfully, it doesn't seem too interested in me for now. What's an alien containment good for anyway? Maybe some pseudoscience? Trap some aliens in there? Is there more wreckage here? A little bit. Oh! Definitely need more of that. That seems to be it. Okay. Well, we're so busy doing science, I don't even feel scared. I don't have time to feel scared. Getting all these blueprints is like giving yourself an endorphin spike. <laughs> okay. It's really dark. What do we want to do? Keep looking around a little bit more? In these conditions? Ah, maybe it's time to go home today. We've got a pretty full inventory anyway. At the minimum, go back to the Cyclops. Yeah. Maybe next time we can put in more stuff into the Cyclops. But for now, I might still want to go back to the base because I want to check out all these blueprints that we just got. Reactor rod. Used to power nuclear reactors. Uraninite? We got some of that. Yes, finally! Aerogel. Prawn suit grappling arm. We can make that. Benzene. Torpedo arm. I need one more. Cyclops thermal reactor module. Polyaniline. Kyanite? Nuclear reactor. Plasteel ingot. Alien containment. We know how to make these things. Yeah, but they do seem to be pushing me to go to places I haven't been to before because these new chemical ingredients, benzene, kyanite, all that. Hmm. What was this? Short range scans show a cave system rich in ah. fossilized remains beneath this area. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's time to go home now. Hmm. I don't even want to move from here though, just in case if the Reaper sees me. But we should be okay.
If we can see those glowy trees, that'll make me feel better. All those peepers! If you look closely, their eyes are all closed. Whoa. Hmm. Unfortunately, one bad thing is that there doesn't seem to be too much of the gel sacs. I think it's one that we gotta bring back and maybe grow on the external grow bed or something. Hopefully it can be grown. I'm not sure at this point. We'll have to see. Oh, that's a creature egg. Oh, is that an egg of you? The ampule? It might be. Dude, it doesn't even make a difference having the light on or not. Oh my god. Okay. Let's go back to our makeshift home. 